guys. So this next concept that we're going to talk about I call plumb lines. And this really comes from a tool that you might use if you were doing something like hanging wallpaper. So if you haven't hung wallpaper, you might not have been exposed to this tool. It's called a plumb line. And basically what it is is it's a weight that's hanging on a string. And the string is flexible and the weight is heavy. So what it does is it guides the line of the string to be perfectly, truly vertical with the aid of gravity. So the plumb is the weight and the line is the string. We're going to take that same concept and apply it to, in this case, a photograph just because it's easy to show you. It would be something that you could do with your wooden dowel and you could hold it up when you're sighting. <clears throat> um, so know that you know it's best if you can draw things that are 3D that you're drawing in real life, but if you can't, then it's fine to use a, a photograph. Um, your drawings will look better if you're working in 3D, however. So, but let, for the purpose of showing you on camera, let's take a look at a couple of photographs where I've used plumb lines both vertically and horizontally so that I can show you how to use this as a guide. This is going to work along with your structural line, with your siding, um, in order to get better proportions and more accurate outlines. It's also going to work along with your negative space. So go ahead and take a look at those videos also that I have on my channel because they'll all work together. And um, once you've watched those, come on back here and let's take a look at the page. Okay, so <clears throat> what I've got here is a drawing and a photograph of a little bird bath that I took. And what I've already done for you guys is I've laid out some plumb lines. Now, the plumb, the way that it works with the string, it's always going to be a vertical line that it's showing you. But you can take the same concept and use it with horizontal lines as well. <coughs> Both ways, it's going to reveal a lot about your structure of your drawing so that you can get your proportions accurate. So first, I want to show you over here what I've done. What I did over here was I drew a vertical line that actually crosses in this section of the pedestal of the birdbath. So it directly crosses this outer curve and this inner curve. The reason that I did that is because by having this vertical line here, I can see this curve better that curves out, and I can see this curve better that curves in. I'm actually almost looking at the negative shape or the negative space here between the two. And I want to make sure that it's duplicated from what I see on the photograph. Now, I know that the contrast is not great on this photograph, but right here you can see, maybe I'll put it in with a Sharpie so you can see it even better. There's the curve, the outer curve of the pedestal, and here is the inner curve. So they actually cross right there. Then I want to make sure that this line matches this line and this line matches this line. So my vertical plumb line in between actually helped me to see that shape a little bit better. The next thing I want to show you is the same idea with horizontals. And I'm actually going to do that one for you right now. <clears throat> so I've got this picture of a house that I visited friends in in Telluride last year. <clears throat> and I've already sketched some of these things out, including the garage. Now, this angle would be difficult for a lot of my students to see. When you're working in two-point perspective, oftentimes I've had students say, I can't tell if this is an angle up or down. It, you know, maybe it's angled up, maybe it's angled down, but just looking at it, I can't tell. Maybe it's horizontal. So what works really well for me is if I use a ruler, <clears throat> And I might have to lean over my page here. I'm actually going to use a plastic ruler as a secondary guide. The plastic ruler helps a lot because the plastic ruler has a grid on it. So I can line up the edges of the grid and ensure that my plastic ruler is at a horizontal. So I'm going to lean over. You won't see for a second. And then once I know that this is at a horizontal and this is at a horizontal, I can make sure that my metal ruler is at a horizontal. And now, 
I'm going to point this out with a pencil. I can look really clearly at this angle at the top of the garage door, and I can see that compared to my horizontal, this angle is slightly slanted down. And then I almost envision this wedge shape right here so that I can picture what this angle is a little bit more. And then I want to create the same thing on my page. So I'm going to hold my rulers, slide my page up, make sure that the rulers are still at a true horizontal, and then I can visualize this wedge shape right here and see if that's a similar proportion. It looks like I've made it just slightly deeper of a curve, so I can adjust that. And in this case, I'm going to erase my original line first because I can see that they're really quite close to each other. Those are going to be hairline adjustments. And so if I leave it in there, it's going to be harder to correct once I'm done. And now, <clears throat> again, I'm going to adjust my page, make sure that it's nice and perpendicular to my line. And then I'm going to use this ruler, almost like my little clapper here, to create a similar looking wedge shape. Now I have to account for the thickness of my pencil, so I might need to move it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to put in that line. And you can see that was a, quite a bit of an adjustment, a little bit more than a hairline there. But hopefully that's going to be a truer angle. And now I'll have to correct this one. <clears throat> so you can see that I'm always going to be making little adjustments. I never make it perfectly to begin with. Um, it always takes extra time. But using these plumb lines both as a vertical line and as a horizontal line really help me to see the angles better and to see the proportions better so that I can try to get my outline as accurate as possible before I go to shading. Soon we're going to get to the shading and that's really the fun part, but you have to lay these foundations first in order to get to that part. So I hope that helps you guys out. Thank you all so much for watching. More videos are coming soon, so if you wish to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that. And also you can check out my website, lzmstudio.com.